Hey, what's up everybody? Doran Aldana here coming out to you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about practice builders versus business builders. What's the difference and why does it matter to your business, to your freedom, to your lifestyle, to your income, to your level of satisfaction and fulfillment? Why does it even matter? And so we're going to get into what it is and the implications that these distinctions have in your business, not just now, but for the rest of your career in terms of freedom, fulfillment, fun, and all the good stuff that got you into this business to begin with. And why am I talking about this? Well, I've been no noticing more and more lately with this uh, crazy refi boom we've been in where many of you, especially those of you who've been in the business for a while or have been having an absolute heyday. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. You're making more money than ever before but I'm seeing so many of you burnt out, depleted, running on fumes, frazzled, fried, and not enjoying life that much. You got all this money in your bank account, making more money than you ever have before, but the fulfillment factor is running on E. And I'm hearing a lot of people with the common sentiment of, I can't wait till things slow down so I can take a break. Perhaps you can relate to that. Well, that's cool because that gets you connected to your value for freedom, for balance, for family, quality time with those you care about. Those are all good things and those are noble things and those are wholesome things. And I encourage you to want to cultivate more of a holistically balanced, fulfilling life. So there's nothing wrong with that, but that's a symptom of you doing it the hard way and being a practice builder versus a business builder. What is the difference between a practice builder and a business builder. So let me unpack this for you. A practice builder is someone who owns a job. Okay. If we own a restaurant, you are the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats, you're stirring pots, you're doing dishes, you're doing all of the busy work of working in your business, putting out fires, you know, pushing paper, administration, et cetera, et cetera. So you're doing your business. You own a job. It's basically a glorified job and you're trading time for money on the proverbial time for money treadmill. And that's great if that's what you want. But something tells me you didn't get in this business to be the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all your hats and have no life. True. Something tells me you did not get in this business to be burnt out, frazzled, fried and feel like your telephone is a growth coming out of your ear and you're constantly in front of your computer screen and on the telephone and doing administrative minutia that sucks you dry and drains your battery. Something tells me that's not what inspired you to get into this business, was it? Something tells me you got in this business because you wanted freedom, you wanted autonomy, you wanted independence, you wanted to call your own shots, be your own boss, create a magical life for yourself and your family. And then of course you got into the business, you got trained up, and you know, all of a sudden you start closing deals, you're learning how to find a home for a loan, you're learning how to structure the deal, learning how to interact with clients, learning how to get the deals done on time with five-star reviews, and all that's fine and dandy and beautiful. But then, of course, the refi boom hits, rates are crazy low, lower than they ever have before, and the faucet just goes on full blast. Now it's like getting a sip of the fire hose, right? And you're having a hard time keeping up and you're still trying to manage all this minutia yourself or you're delegating to a substandard uh, support. Maybe that it's a shared processor who doesn't care like you care, who's doing deals and managing deals for a bunch of different LOs. You're just one of many and they couldn't give a rat's ass whether your deal closes on time because they're just punching the clock on a salary plus uh, maybe a per file bonus, but they don't care like you care. They don't have what's at stake like what you have at stake. And so you're having to manage the minutia, put out fires, babysit processors that aren't doing their job right, or you just don't have enough processors. So you might have some really good ones, but you don't have enough. And so you guys are way over capacity. And so you're doing a lot of the paper pushing that you should not be doing. And that's why you're so frazzled and fried and burnt out because you're doing way more than you want to be doing when it comes to the administrative crap. True. So a practice builder is basically the business. If you take the day off, things fall apart. The wheels fall off the wagon, right? You take a week off even more. So you want to take time away with the 
family over Christmas, you're concerned about deals falling through the cracks, you're constantly having to check emails, check your voicemails, reply to texts. And so you don't really own the business, the business owns you. You don't have full control. In fact, you're out of control because you're constantly having to do all this hustling and grinding just to keep the wheels on the tracks. And the moment you stop the grinding and crossing the T's and dotting the I's and doing all the micromanagement of minutia, that's when you have derailments. That's where you pull out your fireman cap on and you're putting out fires. It's stressful, right? There's just so many different dimensions that you're managing. That's all part and parcel of the symptom of being a practice builder. Now, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a practice builder, but if you want true freedom, if you want true independence, autonomy, freedom, where you can call your own shots and do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want, to be able to go play golf when you want without worrying about the wheels falling off, to be able to take the family to Disney World and not have to worry about the wheels falling off, to be able to you know, live a magical, abundant life on your terms and to be able to get your life back, to be able to go to the gym or go and exercise in the morning and not worry about the fact that taking care of yourself is going to be a sacrifice to deals that are going to implode because you're not managing managing them and babysitting them every single second. If you want total control of your life and your time, being a practice builder will not bode well because a practice builder by virtue of being a practice builder has you being in the business. You're working in the business. You're not working on the business. You are the business. You are the heartbeat of the business. You are the sales management. You are the sales force. You are the administration. You are the operations. You are the pipeline manager. You're everything in the business. And that's great if that's what you want. But if you want true freedom, we've got a problem because you own a job. Job stands for either just over broke or journey on the way to brokenness. Now that may not mean financially, it might be broke with time, broke with peace of mind, broke when it comes to being able to have total control and freedom uh, and autonomy with your time. So broke may not be a financial term. It may be broke in the sense of you're feeling more burnt out, frazzled, fried, and you're feeling broke when it comes to fulfillment. You may have been happier making half as much as you were before because you weren't so stressed out. So broke does not mean financially broke. It may mean emotionally broke. Broke may mean that you're not spending enough time with your family. Broke may, may mean that you're living parallel lives with your spouse because you're not spending enough time with them because you're working all the time in the office with the office ball and chain. Broke may mean that your kids are in the most formative years in their lives and they're not getting enough time with mommy or daddy because mommy or daddy's in the office all the time, a slave to the business. Broke may mean you're not getting a quality night's nice sleep because you're concerned about all these puzzle pieces fitting together and making sure nothing falls out. So I wanna expand your concept of broke. Job equals journey on the way to brokenness or just over broke, which basically means life is not the way you want it. Sure, you may have a full bank account, but that does not mean you're living an abundant life. That just means you got a bunch of money, but you may not have time to enjoy it, peace of mind to enjoy it, presence of mind to enjoy it, health to enjoy it, and just that sense of being on purpose and with purpose to enjoy it. So there's a lot that goes into an abundant life. It's not just finances. It's health. It's an emotional peace, gratitude, joy. It's a presence of mind. It's the sense of feeling like you're living your best life now, not someday. So those are some symptoms of being a practice builder and owning a job. Now, the things that suck most that I've seen uh, working with mortgage professionals for the last 15, 16 years that I've seen on the front lines coaching mortgage professionals in this respect. When it comes to being a practice builder, there's a heck of a lot of suck that goes with that. But here are some of the top, maybe three to four of the biggest sucks I see people suffering with. 
And I've already alluded to some of them. I'll just recount them just to get you reacquainted. And perhaps you can relate to one, if not all of these. So the suck of telling yourself, I never seem to have enough time. So you feel like you're at the effect of your business, not at the cause. You feel like you're being controlled by your business instead of being in control. That is definitely a suck of being a practice builder because when you're at the effect of circumstance instead of being at the cause, that's a symptom of being a victim. You may not have ever thought of it as being a victim, but that's a symptom of eating from the bread of victimhood, a voluntary victim where you don't have control of your time and your schedule anymore. And there's a bunch of have tos. Just It's a mountain of have tos, a mountain of obligations, a mountain of things that you feel like you have to do versus you get to do. Notice the difference between the feeling of a have to versus a get to. And so there's a lot that is draining you, draining your battery because it feels like obligation. It feels like work. It feels like a mountain of shit to do. And it's heavy. It's a heavy burden. That's a suck of being a practice builder. It doesn't invigorate you. It doesn't enliven you. It doesn't excite you. It's just minutia, mundane. It's like Groundhog's Day. It's just the same thing over and over and over again. It's the sense of being reactive versus being proactive. It's the sense of having other people and other forces dictating your life and your time versus you dictating your life and your time. So those are all sucks of being a practice builder. There's also a suck of feeling like there's no way out. The set, this feeling that it's always going to be this way. Almost a sense of not despair, but Will I ever get off this treadmill? Will I ever actually spread my wings and soar to freedom like I intended to create and manifest when I got in this business? So there's a sense of like mundaneness, boredom, same old, same old. And the light, if there is any light at the end of the tunnel, it's very distant. So it just feels like how long is this going to go on for? How long am I going to have no life and have my body feel like it feels out of shape and having my mind feel the way it is, a sense of dissatisfaction and unhappiness because I'm so myopically focused on one thing. I don't have a robust, balanced life. All I'm doing is working. I work. I have a little bit of time with my family. I go to sleep. Hopefully, I get to sleep. And hopefully I stay asleep and then I get up early and I do the same thing all over again. And I'm doing that five, six, seven days a week. That is not the way you want to live. You know it and I know it. But that is the suck of being a practice builder. And it's a symptom of doing it the hard way and not having the right structure in place. So let's talk about what that looks like when you have the right structure in place. Let's contrast the practice builder and the suck of being a practice builder with a business builder. A business builder owns a system. They don't own a job. They own a system. It's the difference between Bob's Burger Joint down the street, the Ma and Pa shop that has Ma and Pa working all day, every day. They're the chief cook and bottle washers. They're wearing all the hats. They're doing all the customer service. They're doing all the financial management and accounting. They're doing all the paperwork and administration. They're doing all the operation, flipping the burgers. Uh, they're cooking the fries. Everything's been done by Ma and Pa in the back. And they can make a living. Certainly they can pay the bills, but all they do is grind in that kitchen all day long. That's a job. In contrast, let's say we've got Ray Kroc with McDonald's. He built systems. He inherited by virtue of buying out the McDonald's brothers. He already inherited a wicked effective system. The fries were dialed in. The burgers were dialed in. Everything was spick and span. There was already a brand in place, goodwill in the marketplace. So we inherited by virtue of investing in a system, policy procedure protocol that was already in place from the McDonald's brothers. And then he built upon those policy procedure protocol and systems to make it even better. And then he pressed the scale button and went national. Did Ray Kroc flip burgers all day long? No, he trained pimple popping teenagers to do that for him. 
literally a 40 billion plus per year business run by pimple popping teenagers. How is that freaking possible? I'll tell you how. Ironclad, airtight policy, procedure, protocol, and systems. Ray Kroc did not own a job. He owned a system. And that's what made him a multi-billionaire. But notice, once that system is created and he plugged the right people into the right seats in that system, he didn't have to be there. He could be on the golf course. He could be with his family. He could be operating in his zone of genius, doing what he loves, doing what ignites him and excites him. He didn't have to be in the kitchen next to the hot stove all day flipping burgers. So that's the difference between a business builder and a practice builder. A practice builder owns a job. A business builder owns a system. What I see is so common among mortgage professionals is they take the habit force, the paradigm, the beliefs of their previous career, having a job, trading time for money, working for someone else, building someone else's dream, and they bring that same paradigm into being a mortgage professional. They're a doer. They're not a business builder. They're a doer. That's their paradigm. That's their habit force. That's their identity. That's their belief system. And that's cool. Again, there's nothing wrong with that if you're happy with that. But if you want to build true freedom for yourself and your family, you've got to move your paradigm beyond the job mentality to being an entrepreneur, to being a business builder, to creating and building systems, to work on your business, not just in your business. And that takes sophistication. It takes skill. It takes a high level of mastery and leadership to be able to do that successfully. So I'm not saying it's easy, but what I am saying is it's worth it if you want to create a business that sets you free as opposed to enslaves you. So let's talk about the awesome of being a business builder for a moment. Now I've learn the hard way on this because I was the practice builder, the chief cook and bottle washer, wearing all the hats, doing everything myself. I was, you know, making an okay living. I was doing better than most, but I didn't really have true freedom, autonomy, independence. I certainly did not have any uh, even remotely close to degree of wealth. It was just a good living. And that was great at the time but I didn't want to just make a good, good living. I didn't want to just get by. I just, I didn't want to just make do. I wanted to make history. I didn't want to just have a living. I wanted to have a life. I didn't want to just earn a decent lifestyle. I wanted to create freedom, magic moments with my family where we could go on vacation. I don't have to worry about my business falling apart in my absence. The problem is I didn't know how to do that. So I was just banging my head against the wall for a long time trying to figure it out on my own. It wasn't until I started to invest in myself and get the right people in my corner to teach me and guide me that things started to open up for me. For the longest time, I was making $200,000, $300,000, $400,000 a year. It wasn't until I actually started to learn from other people who have been there, done that, got the scars to prove it, who already learned what landmines to avoid, that I stepped into a new level of freedom and autonomy and independence and actually started to structure my business that sets me free. And that's when I started to get into the seven figures and beyond level that allowed me to actually have policy procedure protocol team and such where I can step away from the business and still have it run in my absence. So the awesome on the other side of me learning from other people who already had the recipe for freedom, already had the formula for freedom and allowed me to just stick my key in the ignition and drive away with that proven recipe, that formula, that blueprint is that now I have all kinds of freedom to do the things I want to do. I have all kinds of freedom to be able to spend my time where I want to spend it. And that's my goal for you. My goal for you is you have more and more time doing the things that light you up like a Christmas tree, that have you feel ignited, excited, passionate. I have a dream for you, and I hope you have this dream for you as well, that you step into your God calling, that you step into that calling, that divine calling that's uniquely carved out for you, that is uniquely a perfect hand and glove match with your gifts, 
your talents, your abilities, your strengths that allows you to make the difference you're called to make in the world, to show up and shine, to be a bright light full of light and love in this dark world, to be able to be that light for your family, for your community, and to be able to come alive, to come awakened, to come invigorated and ignited into the fullness of your destiny, your calling, your purpose, where you're living on fire, on purpose, with purpose. That is all what's possible when you step into being a business builder. Because if you're doing a bunch of crap that drains you, if you're doing a bunch of stuff that zaps you and soaks up your battery, it's gonna be very difficult to be able to create a life of freedom. So that being said, that is the awesome of being a business builder, is freedom, passion, fun, fulfillment. And the shortcut to that is mentorship, finding people who've already been there, done that, and have the proven blueprint and learn the secret sauce from them so you don't have to mess around turning you know, this journey onto freedom into a decade long journey. Why not just get there in a year or two versus 10 or 20? Condensing decades into days is possible if you have a proven blueprint. So if you're watching this right now and you'd like to learn how to condense decades into days so you don't have to mess around doing it the hard way, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business. We have an honest conversation and we look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like and how to achieve that. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. But either way, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun along the way. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, my friends, that's all we got for today. My name is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We just talked about practice builders versus business builders. What's the difference and why does it matter? I trust you got value, distinction, clarity from this. And I trust that you're more invigorated and committed to becoming a bonafide, certified, qualified business builder than ever before. If you want the shortcut to be able to achieve that better, faster, easier than ever before, go ahead and book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Be blessed, y'all. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace.